Now let's shift our attention to security defense techniques. The first thing you wanna do is develop a security policy. And the way to do that is you define security standards. You develop a policy for protecting companies' physical and IT assets. In most companies, a chief security officer or a chief information security officer, also known as CISO, is responsible for developing the security policy. So that's the most important step, guys. You need to make sure that you have a security policy developed. Then what you do is you take the next step, user awareness and training. That means you design a formal training program as part of your security policy to educate users on how to protect themselves against various threats that we talked about so far, like malware, social engineering, etc. Make security training and certification mandatory for all employees. Make that part of your HR onboarding plan, for example. And then the final step would be physical access control. So which could mean providing a security badge to employees. Limit access to various locations in your company, such as an office, data center, etc., by providing badge access to employees, contractors, and customers. Now employees may have a lot of access to all the facilities in your environment. Contractors may only be limited to certain locations and customers may only be given temporary access while they're accessing or attending a meeting at your site, for example. And electronic badge access also provides an order trail. So a big benefit of having a badge access is it leaves an order trail. So when somebody walks into a building, when they sign in, when they sign out, you have all those details captured through an order trail because the badge identifies who the user is and when they signed in and when they signed out. And if anything malicious happened in that time frame, then at least that audit trail helps you pinpoint if they did something bad while they were physically there on site. And finally, automate the access removal of a terminated employee. I cannot emphasize that enough. Like I said before, as soon as an employee is terminated, make sure not only their access to different systems is removed and IT assets is removed, but also their access is removed to your locations. Because also remember, we hear in the news all the time, bad guys going out there, an active shooter type situation, right? It's absolutely horrific, it's nightmarish. And the best way to protect against that is make sure they don't have access to the office to begin with after they have been terminated. Now, I would be remiss if I didn't touch on one of the key concepts when it comes to a defense mechanism called defense in depth. It's a very, very deep topic. I'm not gonna spend a ton of time and this is once again, I'm kind of going beyond a typical CCNA exam, but I'm trying to give you a glimpse of what it takes to implement security from a real world perspective because this topic is very near and dear to my heart. It's all about deploying security in layers. So we have a parameter layer. So this is the edge of our network. This is one layer where you would deploy certain type of security. Typically firewalls fit into the parameter security. Within the network, making our routers and switches hardened, it's called device hardening. We might actually do that at this layer within our defense in depth strategy. Then when it comes to the host, this could be a server and it could be antivirus, anti-malware protection, things like that, right? To protect the host or the server itself. Then that server might be running an application. Now, how do we protect that application? Once again, we could use things like antivirus, anti-malware, different type of mechanisms to protect that application. And then a level deeper is the gold mine, right? Data is the gold mine in our network. This is what the bad guys are after, ultimately. For example, if you're Tesla and you build this beautiful electric car 
you wouldn't want your intellectual property and secret research and development data to be stolen by a bad guy because all of a sudden that data can now be used by a competitor to maybe start a brand new company that is now competing with Tesla at a much better price point. So what you can see here is security is not as simple as going, okay, I'm just gonna go ahead and buy a bunch of firewalls and it's like one and done type deal. It's never one and done. You wanna peel the onion. You always wanna look at security from different layers perspective and then you have to protect each layer uniquely within your environment to be able to ensure security. Now, once again, even with all these advanced security mechanisms, you're still not gonna be able to achieve 100% security, but by deploying security at each layer uniquely, you're severely reducing the attack surface. Each of these circles here we're looking at, each layer within our environment presents a unique attack surface. And by deploying different security techniques, the idea is to reduce the attack surface. Remember, if the bad guy is adamant enough, eventually they're gonna break into your environment, no matter what you do. It doesn't matter how smart you are or how much money you have spent. Eventually they're gonna break in. But if you made it so much harder for them that it takes them months or potentially even years to break in, people wanna go after easy targets. They don't have that much time. And if you think about the world we live in today, everybody wants instant gratification. If they're gonna try and try and try, and after a few days, they're gonna probably give up and move on to the other company. And that's the idea. You wanna make it so much harder for the bad guy to break into your network that they just go ahead and give up and move on to somebody else. Hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, give me a thumbs up, hit subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.